All your bass Chris. Hello, all your bass Chris here, staring at a table, staring at the Retroflag GPI case. I love this, this is lovely. If you don't know what this is, I did a video about this a while ago, and this is a Raspberry Pi Zero powered handheld device that runs retro games, uh, it's Retro Pi, well, emulation station, and uh, powered off three AA batteries, and the Raspberry Pi Zero hides inside this little fake cartridge. Love it, it really is beautiful, and uh, I, there's a video all about what I think about it in my video playlist. Uh, or probably up in the corner there. So why have I brought this back out? Uh, well, obviously I use this almost daily still, because while I love my Mister, what it doesn't have is portability. And sometimes when you're on your lunch break at work or in a bus queue or somewhere, you want to whip out and play a bit of Tetris or other retro games. But this is starting to become a little bit long in the tooth, underpowered if you like, very good at what it does, but it doesn't do anything more than that. So, PlayStation games, maybe. Nintendo 64 games, no. Nothing like that. So I thought it was time for an upgrade. So, we'll just move you to one side. But I, st I still love you, but we're just moving you aside for a moment. So I decided to invest in one of these. Now this is the Ambernic RG351V. Ooh, catchy name. And this is a very similar device to this. This is a single board computer running uh, Linux running emulation station and it runs retro games. Obviously the big differences between the two is we have a little analog stick, we still have the four face buttons, but if we look at the back of the device we have some shoulder buttons as well, four to be precise. And it does look a bit weird in profile, doesn't it? Uh, so yeah, uh, brilliant. What's the, what's, apart from the uh, aesthetics, what are the differences internally? Well this runs at 1.5 gigahertz, while well, this runs at one gigahertz. This has quite a bit more RAM. This has two, megabyte, uh, two gigabytes of RAM, I do believe, while well, this has one gigabyte. So, and overall, this will run Nintendo 64 games. This will run PlayStation games, and it will also run Dreamcast games badly. And other differences, rechargeable battery, high resolution screen, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's not as charming as this. I'm going to say this still feels like a real Game Boy to me, while this feels like a Game Boy type console. Right, let's get down to nitty gritty. What I'm going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of a, a sanity check and we're going to try and fire these things up at the same time to see difference in boot up. So I'm going to click the switch and do this. So they're both firing up. This has a rumble motor in it. So I gave the, uh, gave the retro flight case a little bit of a head start there, if I'm honest, because it won't be ready before the Ambernic. Right, there we go. So the Ambernic is ready and going as we speak. While we're still waiting on the GPI case. This is not bad. This isn't a bad device. It just takes a little bit longer to fire up. And it is still lovely. They both have speakers built in. Both, had head, both have headphone out sockets. Both have Wi-Fi uh, and Bluetooth, believe it or not. Uh, actually, no, this has Bluetooth, this doesn't. And the retro flag is up and running now as well. So differences. Oh. Sorry, the Ambernic decided to join in there. So differences in device. Uh, as you can see, the screen is different on both of them. Uh, I'm going to give this a fair comparison, make sure this is fully bright. I've got a little brightness wheel there. And... I'm going to have a quick look at the comparison on the screen. So you can probably probably can't even see the uh, retro flag here in the daylight. While well, you might be able to see the Ambernic slightly better. Absolutely lovely systems, both of them. But uh, I'm going to put the retro flag away for now. I love you still. I love you. We'll put you over there. And we're going to concentrate on the Ambernic. So. We are in daylight, so this isn't the ideal place to do it. So let's move somewhere else. Okay, here we are, we're in my kitchen now. Uh, a couple more things I want to talk about here. Uh, you'll notice on the bottom, we have three ports, two USB-C and a headphone jack. The reason we've got two USB-C ports is 
it allows you to plug in USB peripherals in uh, peripherals, per, uh, keyboards and that in one of them and in the other one it's strictly for charging. And of course headphones are for sticking things in your ears to make louder. Start and select buttons, these are nice and squishy, D-pad feels good, this feels less good but it's still okay. This button um, also feels good. Not used much in this firmware. We'll talk about the firmware again in a second. The face buttons feel good. The back ones are okay, and that's the best you can say about them. Clicky, uh, tactile, they work. But I mean, look at the space constraints we've got here. I think they did an okay job. Let's, oh, let's fire up an Amiga game. Now, as you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Amiga fan. So let's fire up IK Plus to show you how the emulation works on this. Uh, spoiler, it works really well. This is going to have to be turned up because IK Plus is legendary. Volume controls are like the little clicky buttons on here. Not like the nice wheel the Retro Flag has, but you can't have them all. And brightness control, you control it in-game by holding down a button then pushing a D-pad up and down. But just leave it on full brightness, because why not? This is your power button uh, and reset button there. But you can force a reset by holding that down. Do, do, do. Hang on, I'm bringing up IK Plus to my uh, microphone so you can hear it. <sighs> can I blame the viewfinder for being very bad at IK Plus? He said, winning the match for the first time ever. All right, I'm going to uh, fire up a little bit of Nintendo 64. Now, mixed bag, the Nintendo 64 emulation. Some games run beautifully, some games just don't run quite as well. Right, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. This is notoriously difficult to emulate. You can, with a bit of tweaking, you go into the cores and stuff, um, make things run slightly better. For mature audiences only. Just like me! My content, not that I'm mature, he said, demonstrating a Game Boy. So I think we can agree that this is running abysmally, but select and Y and we can change stuff like um, the graphics drive and stuff used. I'm not going to get into that. There are loads of videos online about how to do this sort of thing. But uh, as you can see, it's running RetroArch underneath the uh, software. Did I tell you that the uh, firmware here, Arcos, it's based on Ubuntu. This isn't a firmware that came with the device. It did come with firmware which is pretty good for playing like majority of stuff. So PlayStation 1 and stuff would work fine on the original firmware, most SNES games and everything. But um, I wanted something a little bit more interesting that, that has more regular updates, so I went with Arcos. Uh, so yeah, in the box it came with a screen protector, which I've got on. That's why there's dust in the corner of the screen, because I can't put things on. It came with... Um, a, pa a charging cable, USB-A to C, which was quite nice, and uh, USB-C to C doesn't want to work to charge this. Also, apparently, there's a dire warning somewhere about not plugging this into anything that does power delivery. Don't know why, maybe it'll blow up, who cares? Right, anyway. <laughs> um, and it also came with uh, two SD cards, one with the firmware on, and one that was full of games. Naughty. But, you know, I mean, if you already owned all of those games, then that's just a lovely bonus and saves you some time, doesn't it? If you don't own those games, then you're in dubious legal water. However, not getting involved in that one. Where did I get this from and how much? Well, I had one of these on order from Banggood for a while, which was going to be about £75 plus, uh, I think, £3 delivery. But it didn't look like it was ever going to come. They were being a bit evasive. They kept changing delivery dates. And I, I got impatient and went, stuff you. And I went and ordered it from a UK reseller called droyx.co.uk. And uh, they had them in stock. Uh, it was £100 with uh, £103 with delivery and it arrived the next day. So fair play. Can't argue with that. 
I'm just going to load up some Pico X just because Pico X is cool. I had a few um, requirements for my replacement handhold. I wanted it to have rechargeable batteries, uh, or built-in rechargeable batteries, because let's be fair, double A's, while they're everywhere, they're a bit of a pain, aren't they? I wanted it to have decent Amiga emulation. Nintendo 64 would be a bonus. Um, ooh, how rude. So yeah, Pico 8, uh, fantasy console, these games have never existed in real life, it's all virtual. And uh, I don't know how to play. PlayStation 1 runs almost perfectly. I've not had any, I've not really seen any slowdown of note. You have to pardon me, I'm, I'm not holding this particularly well, but I've just had my uh, second shot of my uh, COVID vaccine and I'm feeling a little bit, my arm's hurting a little bit and I keep hearing Bill Gates' voice in my head. That That's a joke, by the way. So Mortal Kombat 4 on the PlayStation 1, in honour of the fact I'm going to watch the film later with my boy, because we love a good chop socky movie. And that sounds like a good one. I did ask him if he could handle a little bit of gore, and he was, seemed really excited by the idea, so we'll do practice, because let's be fair, I'm not any good at games. I only like organising my collection and stuff. I'm like the train, uh, the train spotter who can't drive a train but likes them. That's coming across a bit dark, actually. Hang on, there with me, I'm adjust my ISO settings. There we go. I'm back. <laughs> Wee. Well, you can see that runs at full speed, pretty much. All of the 8-bit consoles are on full speed. This supports so many of them, actually. It supports nearly everything. Commodore 64, uh, I believe, isn't quite supported yet. Um, could be wrong on that one. But there, there is an exhaustive list of stuff. PSP. PSP runs okay. Not brilliant. PlayStation runs really quite well. Neo Geo Pocket, obviously. Dreamcast. Very iffy. But a um, bit of tweaking. You can get it to work. And Nintendo 64 is the same as well. A bit iffy here and there. Super Nintendo runs well. You can run shaders on stuff if you want it to have that classic dot matrix look. And you can also mess with the scaling to get perfect square pixels. So... Please excuse the jump cut, my phone turned off because of the high temperatures we're experiencing here, whatever. So in conclusion, uh, I love this, it's really good, and if you just want to play some games, it's actually quite a good device for that, because you literally throw your ROMs on an SD card, throw your SD card in, and away you go. And uh, it's, it's really nice. Obviously, it doesn't feel like a real Game Boy like my Retro Flag case does. But then on the other hand, it's also really quite nifty and pocketable. It's got the sleep mode, the battery lasts for hours and hours and hours and hours. I've never run out of battery yet and I've been playing obsessively non-stop. So as long as this does the games that you want to play. So if you like your PlayStation games more than Nintendo 64 games, this is going to really satisfy you. Although some Nintendo 64 games will play with tweaking. And of course, if you're that kind of person that likes to get under the hood and tweak, then it's perfect for you. It'll run arcade games beautifully. Even Capcom 3 games run perfectly. Amiga stuff runs great. And uh, it's updated as well. So definitely keep that in mind. Grab the Arcos firmware if you want the same experience I've had. There are different firmwares available. You've got the Emulec one as well as the uh, stock firmware. And Emulec stopped development though, but it is fairly stable and also runs stuff really well. Arcos is still in active development. So yeah, go for it. Anyway, uh, I've been All Your Base Chris. Hope you've enjoyed this non-cupboard video. And take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.